Welcome back to the Let's Get Ready podcast. I'm your host, Marissa Spagnoli, and I'm thrilled to introduce you to our next guest. She is the owner of the viral lip plumper from Scrandy Beauty, Yasmin Debgrada. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. Anytime, I'm excited too. Um, So I love the products that you launch and just everything behind it. So let's get into what we're using real quick, and then we'll start asking you some questions. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the viral lip plumper, of course. Yeah, so first things first, yeah, uh, spicy sauce went viral on TikTok. Literally, Lizzie used it as a prank on her boyfriend, pretending like she got lip injections. So she glued some, I don't know if you saw it, but she glued some uh, lash glue on her top lip, stuck it up, and applied spicy sauce, and he thought she got lip injection. So that was really the start of this popping off on TikTok, everyone going crazy about it, and that's really how the name got out there. And yeah, it's been popular ever since. I love it. And we'll do a before and after too. Like, as you can see, my lips are very small right now, but this doubles the size of them. So I'm excited at the end of the interview to see what we both look like. And then do you apply it already or no? No, I didn't. We can put it together though. Do you want to do it right now? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So you said you had lip liner on, right? Is that like what you usually do? Okay. No, I'll put, I'll put mine on. Okay. Okay. We'll do lip liner. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's different from other lip plumpers because it is more comfortable. So you get that same effect, but it's not going to be painful. Yeah. It's Uh, not painful at all. Yeah. So that's, that's really where it stands out and it's vegan, cruelty free, uh, and super potent. Like if you look at an ingredient list on most lip plumpers, their plumping ingredients are a little further down on the ingredient list and they're still pretty pricey. So mine, you see the plumping ingredients in the first three and it's $20. So some people could be like, Hey, that's a little pricey, but really when you look at the ingredient list, you're, you're getting your money's worth. You're getting your money's worth. And also when you look at the bottle, there's so much lip plumper in this. I feel like you're absolutely yes. getting your money's worth. Totally. And we're going to totally. get onto that in a minute. Cause I have a lot of questions for you on that. And then my favorite that I talk about oh, all the yeah. time. Oh yeah. Oh, my God. I have her with, I'm like ready. I saved the glow for you. So I'm like, we're using her. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, spicy sauce overshadows everything else. So I'm so happy that you love this one. I love this. And like I said on my TikTok, I won't stop talking about it until we're all wearing it because, (laughs) oh my God, it's just so good. It's so natural looking. Um, so I'm excited to start applying that in a second, but, um, then do you want to mention your brow, your new brow coming? Yeah. So Brow Lock Eyebrow Spray is the first ever eyebrow spray ever. So it's a different delivery method. It's not your gel. It's not your pomade. It's not your soap because it is a super thin formula that when you wear it, it's as if you're not wearing anything at all. You just lock your brows how they are in place and they're stay all day flake free brows. Um, so yeah, you, you use it by spraying it on a spoolie. So you don't spray it directly on the face, um, spraying it on a spoolie one to do sprays and then sculpting as you would any product. It just requires a little bit more time for it to settle and dry because it's a liquid form. Um, but the beauty about this is that there's no contamination involved, Brow gels always get so gunky because you're putting it on your skin, you're picking up makeup and you're putting it back in the tube and it gets like, it gets like murky. Oh yeah. Yeah. My elf one right now is like the color of my concealer and I'm like, (laughs) oh, I don't want to put that on my face. I do not like that. And it just makes it look like it's, you get one to two uses of a clean, crisp brow. And then after that, it's like you're applying foundation glue onto your eyebrow so there's you're never going to have that problem with this because each spray is a fresh spray you're not putting this fully into it I love that that just stands out to me just by not having to dig it back in there so exactly. I'm excited yes. for that um so as we start applying my favorite highlight I want to uh-huh. know kind of how you got into wanting to create a brand but like where were you before that were you always kind of in the beauty space I uh, 
Yes. I mean, I've always loved, had a passion for beauty from a very young age. I was in dance and my mom was a single mother. So she, when she had the time to watch dance performances, she wanted to watch them and not be backstage helping me get ready. So that's where I grew to love and learn how to use makeup. And, and I've always been known as the makeup girl in my family, friend circles. And I knew I wanted to do something with that professionally. I just didn't know what quite yet. Um, more than a makeup artist, I wanted to be more involved in the development side of it. So I went to Finham in downtown Los Angeles for beauty. Um, so there I got to test like, um, every category. So I got to intern at many different well-known companies. Then I worked for many well-known companies. And in 2021, I decided to break off and do my own thing. Um, it's what I wanted to do my pretty much since high school. So I just took a chance after the pandemic, you know, like that made me realize life is so short. You never know what will happen. So I just, you know, took my savings, um, busted through that. And finally at the very end, I had some traction on TikTok. Oh my God. That's interesting that you've really, this has kind of always been your thing. Like you were always around product development. Um, So what did you kind of learn from interning at these places that you brought into the process of launching your brand? Yeah, um, you just learned beginning to end all things beauty. So it was nice because FITM required you to get a different type of internship every quarter. So if you did social media, you had to do like product development marketing the next quarter. So I really, none of them were... All of them were my favorites, but the one I loved the most was product development. So I was like, if I want to develop all my products, if I want to go out on my own, at least I know every, a little bit from every different category to do it beginning to end. So you, you learn everything. And I actually had a job that, which at the time I despised the job because it was for a big, well-known company that owned around like 60 beauty brands at the time. And they were so cheap for lack of a better word, they would put one to two people to run entire brands. So I had no choice but to learn literally everything. And that's what made me have all this like knowledge and be able to do it alone. Because if I didn't have that experience, I would be very lost in the industry to build a sustainable and proper brand. Yes. Honestly, sometimes from those crazy experiences just come great outcomes. And that that's interesting. I mean, I feel like we all know that these huge corporations and brands, like they are cheap, but I think to see it and actually work in it firsthand is kind of shocking. And like, I feel like that would definitely inspire someone to want to make a brand. Um, Cause I had a question about like, how did you even start? But like, you definitely had that background of knowing where to find these labs and stuff like that. But for someone who might not know that, where would you kind of direct them to start looking? To start like, yeah. sorry. So if you want it, no problem. If you want to, I would say to start with an idea first and maybe like work it out a bit. And when it comes to actually developing it, there are labs in California, um, color cosmetics labs. So, and skincare labs. So you basically just approach them. Um, a lot of them have high minimum order quantities. So you have to look for the smaller ones or bigger ones that are willing to do like maybe an MOQ of 3000 units, which I looked out on finding multiple labs that were willing to work with me. And from there, you, you, it varies like an R and D fee can be anywhere from $750 for an idea and you get two revisions to two grand for R&D. So it really depends. You just have to go online, make a few calls. And from there, they'll guide you because, you know, after you create a product, they'll be like, okay, now you need to move on to third-party testing. And if you're like, what's that? They'll tell you. And you just are pushed around to the next lab. And, you know, before you know it, you have a product. So it's a lot of talking, a lot of phone calls, but I did it within my circle. So that would be um, professors of mine, people I interned with, maybe it was coworkers. Every day I'm involved with people from my past that I'm asking questions to. Yesterday, I just started getting in conversation with a previous professor of mine about working with her for another idea. So it's just like 
it, it it's a lot of just knowing people or doing your research online to get to know who needs to help you with development. Yeah, that's interesting because I feel like when I just thinking about like launching a brand or like how someone would do that, I would think like you had to know all that stuff. So it's kind of nice to hear that labs can kind of like just push you in the direction that you're supposed to go and like the next steps. And I definitely think resourcing people that you have is the best advice because you just never know how they can help you. Um, So when you started launching this brand, like what was the spicy sauce, the first product that you launched? No, it was lip sauce, which I don't, you have never tried. No. Right. Yeah, no, no, no lip sauce. Okay, so when I first launched the brand, it was, to be honest, doing multi-use was taking way too long. The packaging, I kept running into issues. It was supposed to be in a stick form. But these are the types of things you learn as you're developing. Um, the shimmers were too heavy, so they dropped to the bottom. And in a stick form, you wouldn't get that payoff. So we came to this. So um, lips, so this was taking forever. So lip sauce was like a quick turnaround, get it out there handmade. So it was a combo combo of a lip oil and a lip gloss. So it was super hydrating, not sticky at all. Um, it was an amazing product, but handmade is so time consuming, so expensive when you break down the hours spent to develop that I just had to cut it. And the girl that was helping me like scale it and make them on a daily basis, she was a young girl trying to start her like career. So she's like at UCLA now. And once she stopped, I was like, I have to pull the product. So no more lip sauce, unfortunately, but maybe, um, down the road, I can do some type of moisturization product. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting that it wasn't the lip sauce. So when the spicy sauce went, Oh, well now I get it. The the lip sauce, the spicy sauce. Exactly. That's where it comes from. Yeah, I'm obsessed. Okay. Well, now that we're on the topic of names, cause I'm so interested I feel like coming up with a name for your brand in my, I mean, just from doing this podcast is the hardest part. So how do you come up with a Scrandy beauty? And can you tell us kind of what that means? And then also when you named your products, like, I feel like I just love the names, the spicy sauce, lip sauce, grace period. Can you kind of go into that? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm so glad you like them. They're a little bit all over the place and I will tell you why. Um, So Scrandy beauty is honestly It just, in the Urban Dictionary, it means random, like a random person, right? And so initially, this boy in high school would call people Randy Scrandies, and I liked that. I was like, that's such a cute way of calling someone random Mm -hmm. or something random. And I just used it as a placeholder on my website and eventually just stuck with the name, Um, just kept it as is. Uh, And it kind of, it made sense to me because I was like, I am such a random person not a random person, but I changed taste so quickly. Like I could love something, be obsessed with it one day and like be done with it, sick of it the next day. So I was like, okay, cool. If I have a brand and it's called Scrandy, which means random, I could shift, do whatever I want. And it makes sense because I can tell people, you know, the whole brand is about like just whatever, anything's accepted, whatever. And not too serious. I'm not an aesthetic girl. Like I if I like it, I don't really care if it fits in. I like it for what it is. And that's, that's it. I think that I love that. I love to hear that. That's what Scrandy means. Cause I should have looked it up, but I was like, I want her to tell me. And I feel you on being like random. And I just love the idea of just releasing what you want, because I think it's just so much better than following trends and what everyone else is releasing. It's like what makes you happy. <laughs> and then People just kind of gravitate towards that. Um, that's really interesting that that's what it means. Because I saw you made like a, it was a post or something. And it's like, hey, Scrandies. I'm like, what does Scrandy mean? I'm like, oh, hey, yes. randoms. I love that. <laughs> I think it's so cute. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I think the Urban Dictionary one is just with a Y. And this one's IE. It looks cuter. It is cuter. So, I like the IE. Yeah. It matters. Um, it does matter. It, absolutely. I love that. And then. Another question I had for you when I was looking on your website, um, I kind of wanted to know, like, what was the most important thing? What was the most important thing to you when you were creating this brand? Because I know that you mentioned on your website, you're all about more product, less packaging, more Mm -hmm. for your money. Um, Can you kind of like talk more on that? Yes, absolutely. So being in the industry, you see how wasteful it is. And so many unnecessary things take place just because it's common practice. Um, And just to look good, 
really even behind the scenes to look good. And for me, a lot of things that you spent time and energy on, it's kind of like when your boss like has you do busy work kind of. And I like, even though I went through that, I was like, when I have my brand, I'm not going to do all the busy work, the extra, you know, frills. And so industry practice is if you're in a store, you want to have something that will keep customers from opening the product, using it. So tamper proof things, right? Mm -hmm. Since I am an online brand, there is no need for that, especially since I don't take returns on used product, which chances are if you order it, you're and if, even if you don't like it, you have used it already. Yeah. So you can't return it. So why would I spend money um, and also everything I invest into my brand is something that's paid for later by customers. Like that's how you make a profit, right? So if I add to the cost of my product unnecessarily, it's adding waste and it's adding cost and eventually upping the retail price. So, so long as I'm just online and I don't have a, well, hopefully this happens, but if I don't have a Sephora and Ulta telling me like, you better do this, I'm not going to do it and waste the time, energy and resources on it. So little ways I do it with my brand is shippers. So when you first get your products from a vendor, like a packaging vendor, it comes in, it comes in inners and outers. So inners would be like a pack of like five units, let's say, and they're each wrapped in some type of plastic. Then maybe they're put in an inner box. Then the outer box is the bigger case, right? People change, even if they're not damaged in any way, they just repackage all of that again, just so, just to do it. So it looks nice. So my policy is unless the box is breaking and won't make it in transit, then you switch the cartons. But if not, if I'm receiving a box that is ugly, that is fine by me because I didn't have to waste, I didn't have to invest, pass that onto my customers. Um, so things like that. Yeah. And even like this brow product, um, it's going to come just like this, unless there's damage to the product itself upon arriving to an end user. I'm not going to invest in a box that they're going to rip open and throw away. Yep. Like it's unnecessary. It is unnecessary. And I, I totally agree with like the package and inside the package, inside another package. And I think, and I keep mentioning it, but I feel like with celebrity brands and just all the brands that are popping up right now, I think we're almost blinded to think like, oh, well, I need a pretty box for it to come. And it's like, it's not the box that you should be worried about. It's the product inside. And I feel yes. like these people who are launching brands such as celebrities are focusing too much on the presentation and making the PR box perfect and making just the normal packages look perfect that yeah. the products end up falling short. So I think that more people just need to start doing what you're doing. Cause I think that just, like you said, in the end, just prevents so much like more waste. Like totally you would die. I mean, I don't know how much you are into like recycling stuff, but behind the scenes, I'm sure of any industry, but beauty is the one I have experience in the yeah. waste is disgusting. Like, Oh, it angers me. And, and I just, you know, I, unless someone's forcing me to do it, I'm not going to do it. I don't blame you. No, I, it is disgusting. And it's just, I think we only talk about it in the fashion industry and how wasteful that is. But now I think, I guess with the help of TikTok too, I think we're starting to notice how much we're wasting with products. I mean, even PR boxes that come, it's this huge box. And then this little thing that comes inside and I'm like, oh, you sent that to how many people? Like, you know, we don't need that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And then I know that you mentioned earlier when we were talking about the lips, the spicy sauce, the ingredients list. Yes. And I actually had no idea that these bigger brands put the plumping ingredients last, charge you more money. How come, how did you think to formulate this the way that you did? Well, it just turned out like, so the lab I work with, they when I first launched it, they said they can do 20% plumping ingredients or actually it was like 10%. And I was like, Hey, can you please do 20 for me? I, I, I will sign off like, okay, I'm, I'm accepting 20% any damages. I will take care of whatever. 
they sent me 20% and I was like, oh my gosh, great. It, it plumps the lips. It doesn't hurt. I'm going to do 20. And yeah, I'm pretty sure they had me just sign something. And then later on, they pushed it to 30 because ingredients that are in here. So the main plumping ingredient is capsicum pepper, chili pepper. And whenever you get a shipment of bulk ingredients, they're not exactly the same every time. So you have to test them. And they said, hey, like we can actually do 30% if you want to try it out. So I was like, heck yeah, let's do 30%. And the more they put in there, the higher potency and the higher on the list, the capsicum chili pepper would be. So on TikTok, I don't advertise like, hey, like this brand, theirs is way lower down on the list because I also don't have the knowledge of potency. They might have the same exact potency as me, but they have... um or not potency, they can use the same amount of the ingredient, but have other ingredients that take place above the active, or not active, but the ingredient main, that plus. That makes sense. That's just interesting. Yeah. And then, so I feel like when it comes to kind of like doing this all on your own, which you did, I feel like it kind of brings me into the no story and the no question. Like if someone tells you no, you're talking to the wrong person. Mm. And I'm sure that you can relate to this. Was there any times when launching this brand that you experienced no's and how did you kind of get past those? Yeah, the biggest no I will always remember is even before I started the journey, which was tough and not tough. Um, Surprisingly within my experience, there has never really been a no. There's been like workarounds, like not possible or not right now, but workarounds as a team. But before I even started this, a professor that I really looked up to um, in our class was like, (laughs) probably chances are none of you in here will ever have your own brand. And to me, I was like, that's the whole reason I'm here. Of course, I'm going to have my own brand. (coughs) Why would a professor say that? That's like, he was very realistic. Like I really love him, but that's just one thing that I was like, you should not have said that because young students are so impressionable. So I was, it made me a little bit like nervous, like, Oh crap, maybe he's right. But then I was like, you know what? No, like if I work my ass off, if I learn everything I need to learn, if I start saving for this, like financially, um, which I did ever since high school, I was saving for a brand fund. So one day when I wanted to start a brand, I had the money. Um, so I knew that I would still do it, but getting a no that early on was just like a motivator for me. And honestly now doing it, it's like, you shouldn't tell young people that because anyone could start a brand. I, you know, anyone could do it. It takes hard work. You just have to be knowledgeable of the process and yeah, anyone can do it. It's not like rocket science. You're not curing a disease. So anyone can do it. And yeah, I don't know. He should just never have said that. He should never, like you said, young, I mean, just college students and whatever, they're so impressionable. And I think if I heard that too, I'd be like, what the hell? Like that is something that you, you shouldn't be saying at all. I understand being realistic, but Like you said, I feel like anyone, if you really put in the hard work and you do the research and like you said, are you, you're knowledgeable, then you can make it happen. Um, and I love how that kind of just like put more fire in you to be like, yeah, no, you think I can't do it. I'm going to do it. So I love that. So as you were launching this brand, you made the products and all that. When did you decide to kind of like get on TikTok to market yourself? Just because I know we've talked like it's such a saturated market. How? Did you make yourself stand out as a small brand? So with lip sauce, it was very difficult because you're trying to convince someone through a screen that like what I'm feeling on this end is the best moisturizing lip oil and it's a glossy gloss. They're not experiencing it themselves and they really can't even see a difference. Maybe it looks nice, but you're trying, I was working so hard to convince someone through a screen that this lip gloss slash oil is the best one. And after a lot of time and energy doing that and not seeing the fruits of the of my labor, I was seeing that Daryl little um, pill. I don't know if you, it's like a pill shaped lip plumper that burns yes. people's lip off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was going crazy on TikTok. And I was like, damn, these people are like, they're everywhere. Every time I open up TikTok, it's someone using it. I was like, I'm going to order that. 
see if it works as well as everyone is saying. If it does work, then I don't know what I'll do. But if it doesn't work, I'm going to make my own and I'm going to make it better. And through TikTok, I won't have to do so much convincing. They will see it right there, like small lips, big lips. Like, okay, I want that. Let me buy it. It's very different from like a foundation, a lip oil, skincare, especially. So when I ordered it, burned my lips off, didn't do anything. So I worked with a lab to make spicy sauce. And I was like, okay, I know this is better than this brand, which by the way, that isn't a brand. That is a, oh my gosh, there, that's a whole other conversation about horrible beauty industry scams, but keeping it simple, um, This is a legitimate formula. I'm not knocking anyone off and it really works and it's made with good ingredients. And so when people started to see that on TikTok, that's when it got traction. And literally Lizzie's post opened up a world of eyeballs, like people that, I mean, people I was in high school watching their YouTubes, like um, Nicole, Nicole Consillo. Yeah. She's like, that's amazing. Yeah. Buying my pro, like I see her order come in. Erin Jerchak, I see her order come in. I'm dying, like dying. I can almost cry. Like these people are seeing me and they're buying my product. Charlie D'Amelio brought, bought my product. She never posted it. Uh, it. That's iconic though. Oh, it's like, whoa. Like it, it's just what I saw about Daryl and I bought it. Right. And now regular end users, which are amazing. And then also people who are very influential in the industry are seeing it and trying it and loving it. So, um, yeah, I don't even know what them, I hope I answered your question. No, you did. No. And you're bringing me into more of them. Yes. No, that I, I had no idea. Like you just took it in your own hands. Like, um, I'm going to try this lip plumper. I don't like it. I can make something better. And you did. And you're one person and you're, how old are you? You're young. I'm 26. Okay. 26. Yeah. Like you're still really young just to make something and just p- to pop off like that. And so it leads me into my next question of like, what did, I mean, you kind of explained it, but what did that feel like seeing your products oh go viral? I mean, it's one thing to see these people's orders come in, which I think I would have fainted on the floor if I saw that these, like yes. you said, these YouTubers that we've looked up to <laughs> buy your product. That's exactly. amazing. So what was that like for you? Oh my goodness. It was like, So from a young age, I know now it's more popular, but I've always done this my entire life, which is manifestation. I didn't even know I was doing it. Um, I always, this is so embarrassing, but like would still to this day, I do it because I heard it's good to do. So I'm still doing it. Um, Just having like speeches of like, okay, you win like the best new indie makeup brand and I would like literally do speeches like me pretending like I just won this award and I've done fake scenarios it's so embarrassing but whatever it is not Uh, me going viral right so like I'd be like someone maybe on a podcast asking me like oh my gosh you're so viral on TikTok and I'm like yeah like answering these questions by myself so experiencing it was exactly like I manifested it. It was like people asking me like, how did you go viral? Oh my gosh, what does it feel like? How many orders do you have? You know, and literally I, it was exactly like that. Like when it happened, I thought that my, (laughs) my mother was staying with me because my boyfriend was out of town and my phone kept like buzzing. And I was like, oh my gosh, someone's like, placing orders, canceling orders, and they need help like with their credit card. They need help with the shipping address. And I look at my phone and I was like, oh my, they were all separate names, all for Lip Plumper. And earlier that day, Lizzie had posted Mm -hmm. and I saw three orders come in. And I was like, I called my boyfriend. I was like, oh my gosh, I need like $75 because this big influencer posted about me and I already made like three sales. I was over the moon with my three sales. Little did I know I'd have hundreds, thousands of sales later. Um, just because she, she didn't even talk about the product. I sent it to her in October, um, of 2021. She used it. Didn't even talk about the product. And people were like, what lip plumper, what lip plumper, what lip plumper. And from there, it was just the rest of history. Oh my God. I'm 
That's insane that that is the story of it. And I feel like I love how you brought up the manifestation thing because I'm I'm all about that. I never thought about doing like these speeches. I think that's so you literally spoke it into existence that this was happening. I think that is. I feel like that's genius. And I think more people should know that that is a way to do it, because I think it's one thing to say affirmations and do all that. But it's one thing to like pretend that you're in an interview or pretend that like you're accepting an award. I think that is iconic like thank you I think it's embarrassing but hey maybe no. it did I think it I definitely think it did something and I think it just kind of gives you even more confidence every day just by saying those speeches and subtly kind of believing that like this will happen one day I'm obsessed yes. with that I am obsessed <laughs> with that I can't wait for people to hear that um <laughs> so after kind of going viral I feel like there's a lot obviously to learn good and bad is there anything that you learned after going viral other than like just being so happy and enjoying your success. Yeah. Yeah. Going viral helped me logistically think about tweak my um, purchase process. I would say that's like the biggest amount of change I made when you have that traffic coming to your website, like different personalities, different everything on your website you realize how much work you have to do to make that more seamless, make it more understandable to the masses and have a streamlined um, operations process. So you're not, you're not doing busy work because I had my fair share of busy work to do when the orders were coming in. I was like, like printing labels before you know it. You're like, Oh my gosh, I'm out of lip plumper. Oh my gosh. It takes the lead time is three to four weeks to produce it. 40 days by C. Once it arrives to my lab, it'll need another four to 10 weeks. Holy crap. What do I do? What do I tell my customers? So you're just like learning as you go. Like there's no other way to do it. If you do waste your time making it perfect from the beginning, you'll never start and you'll never have those like um, hiccups to learn and get over through later. Um, So I'm more about like knocking over chairs and running versus like walking perfectly and not knocking anything over. I love, oh my God, I want you to talk more on that because I feel like when I was making this podcast, I'm like, it has to be perfect. I had to have this, that, and the other thing. And I think that no one talks about it. And I think there's so much more beauty in just going with it, get like, mm-hmm. like I said, knocking over the chairs and just like not worrying about it being perfect, but just getting through it and just doing it your way. I love Absolutely. that. And it comes across, I think, more genuine. Like yeah. I'm a huge crime crime junkie. I I love true crime. And I was just right before coming on this podcast, listening to this new series, it's called The Deck. And she, and um, Ashley Flowers, the host was like, I was originally going to cut out so much audio from the person I was interviewing with her kids in the background, asking for snacks, her giggling with her kids, her kids crying in the background. But I wanted to showcase like how happy and how filled with love her home is despite what happened to her and I was like that's like such a good lesson because if Ashley were to have cut those moments out like I wouldn't have been brought to tears during that podcast hearing that and you know it's it's more genuine and if you just let it be exciting things will come out of it versus like you know being very type a about everything you you miss experiences that you were meant to have yes yeah, I love that advice. And I agree because when I just edit these videos, I I feel like I leave them so long because I'm like, there's a reason why I'm doing that. Like, I want people to hear their full story and like the jokes and the little things in between instead of just question after question. So I love that. And then so obviously we know about the hiccups, but what were the highlights after your product going viral, everyone using it? What were kind of the next steps after that? Yeah, so highlights, I mean the first highlight I ever had was when it involves like other people would be DMing anyone I wanted to just because I'm naive thinking that like, okay, if I DM this famous person, they're going to respond to me. Maybe they will, you know, and that's what happened. I DM'd, um, I don't know if you ever watched Euphoria. Yes. I was going to bring up Chloe Cherry using your lip pumper. Yeah. Oh Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of like, okay, I can't, even though I did never heard back from Zendaya. <laughs> hey, it's worth a shot. 
<laughs> um, so I was like, hey, Chloe Cherry's on the rise. She's not the most famous one here, but she's creating a lot of buzz. I can see her getting big later. I DM'd her and I was like, hey, I'd love to send you my lip sauce. Like, my name's Yasmin. She was like, oh my gosh, I'd love to try it. Here's my address. Like, I was like, oh, fabulous. I'll send it to you. And she uses are used since it's discontinued now my clear lip sauce on the daily and before i knew it i was being tagged in um day's beauty like get ready with me and chloe cherry was like using she's like every day i use it i'm like oh my gosh i can do this more and more and more i can do whatever i want anything could happen so that was like the first highlight this aaron jerchak posting was insane um Nicole ordering freaking insane. Um, I love Bravo. I love Real Housewives. So yep. I reached out to Andy Cohen's makeup artist. She loves Scrandy. I oh said, Oh my her God. Every, yeah. That's every just. Time. Yeah. And then she's used it on so many <laughs> Real Housewives. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. I will, you know, it's just like, you never know what will happen. So just be stupid, be naive, and someone will respond to you and you can you can do anything you want to do you can people I'm so happy you brought that up because that's how I am with this like I will dm anyone and I thought it was just me I'm like because my friends are like you just like cold dm these people I'm like oh yeah like I'm just like well what's the worst that can happen they're gonna leave us on red like I'm so glad that you brought that up because I feel like more people should just know like send the dm like you have no No. Holy cherry was like here's my address I'd be like girl what like I would you trust me with this (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're like I, I will delete this after I after I have it that is, <laughs> that's amazing and I love that um I feel like I also want kind of want to ask like what were kind of like the biggest lessons that you've learned uh, aside from just like going with the flow and doing your own thing with this was there anything else that you learned that you think would be valuable advice for someone who is wanting to launch a brand <sighs> lesson wise um or advice I know what got me through like I couldn't even be here talking to you my brand would have already been closed is a support system people that love you people that will do jump in when you need them so going viral like I had to have my boyfriend my sister my brother-in-law my mom and friends come over to help me fulfill orders because I literally could I would still be packing right now so my dear sister would come over after her hard day day of work and pack until nighttime and and just like even when I got to a point at first I would just pay them in food and come home come over I'll have (laughs) wine and dinner for you guys can you help me pack please but they were so happy to they were so excited like so excited for me and I if I couldn't get the orders out people would be angry and I couldn't even go on you know so a support system or at least like a game plan in case you do go viral some way to pay people or ask people for help to get it going because right off the bat you can't hire people that are going to be working for you on a daily basis because there's no money to go around yeah but um as you're getting traction just have think of the day where you are viral and you are selling out your websites blowing up and think of how to keep that momentum going and keep the people who are buying your product happy. Because if you're, if you're not fulfilling their products, they're going to get angry and they're going to have a bad taste in their mouth and think of that when they think of your brand. So, um, yeah, advice would just be think of your success and have a game plan for it because it could happen overnight. It literally happened overnight for me and many, many brands. Yeah, no, I think that is great advice. And I think it's great that you mentioned a support system because I feel like oftentimes people launching something are like, I can do it. I can do it all myself. And it's like, it's okay to ask for help. And like, these people will help you whether or not they're going to, they're either getting a bottle of wine or nothing They're It's nice to ask for help. Exactly. And then, then you'll feel like, oh my gosh, you'll feel the best when you can be like, Hey, 20 bucks an hour, come to my house, pack some orders. You'll feel like you're the queen of England, you know? So even my friends and family didn't want to accept the money. I was like, you're, um, you're accepting this. Thank you. Now I can pay you 
it's, it's your fun money. So that transition is amazing. You'll feel like a million bucks. Um, so yeah, support system would be the biggest thing. I love that. And I just love how like real you are. And it's just like, it just shines through in your brand. Um, kind of my last question for you, where do you see your brand going, whether that be in stores or products? And mm. is there anything you want people to know about Scrandy before we go? Sure. Yeah. Um, I see, well, all my speeches that I've had with myself <laughs> have been about <laughs> being a staple product brand. So what I mean by that is not being a full blown makeup line for everyone and everyone's taste, um, being a go-to place. So not a one-stop shop. So for example, you can love Too Faced, get everything from Too Faced, you're a Too Faced girl. But when it comes to lip plumper, you're like, no, I get my lip plumper from Scrandy because I've mastered, hopefully I've mastered it and your staple lip plumper is Scrandy. Then you can be a total Fenty girl. You get all your concealers, your foundations from Fenty. But when it comes to brow products, you're like, I get brow spray because Scrandy's the only one that has brow spray. So I just want to be that little thing within your routine that is a go-to, it's unmatched, and you can't live without it. Because I don't have the money to, I'm not interested in, and plenty of people, I'll let Kylie Jenner and, and Rihanna launch every shade of lipstick. We need it. People want it. I just can't do that. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of people, resources, which I don't have. And for me, it's not exciting. I've launched plenty of shade stories in my experience. I want to focus on things that are revolutionary and something maybe you didn't know you need or something you need. It's a special iteration to make a beauty product that exists just a little bit better and being your go-to. No, I love your take on that because I think when we see so many celebrity brands with a whole collection of, like you said, 50 blush shades or 50 lipstick shades, whatever. I think people lose the fact that you need to have something that is the staple. Like you have three products that I'm obsessed with. And like you said, I love my highlights, but like when it comes to my Miami trip coming up, I'm bringing my Scrandy for the beach. Like, and the lip plumper is like, you want to be known for something that people are going to remember. And I think that is what's going to make you just stand out even more and make your brand just last so much longer because people need to come back to you. And I think that's great advice because I think we get so overwhelmed with everyone else launching huge collections that we lose sight of like make, like you said, making something revolutionary. Like you have such interesting Mm -hmm. products and I'm so excited to see what else you come out with because you. you just do it right. And I love your intentions also behind your brand. I think that just makes you stand out even more. Thank you very much, Marissa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming on. I loved talking to you and my lips are literally double the size now. Oh, like, yes, I feel them. <laughs> I love them. I'm like, oh, I'm like ready to go now. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. And thanks for having me. Anytime. And do we have a brow code that you want to mention to our viewers? Oh my gosh. Yes, uh, we do. It's actually the code is get ready with me. So it's G R W M is the code. And once this airs, um, it will be available till the end of April. So what it is, is if you pre-order brow spray, you get 20% off the other products that we talked about today. So it could be Dewy Maltese highlighter or spicy sauce, extreme lip plumper. Um, so that way you can try a little bit of what we talked about and then get be one of the first to receive brow spray and try brow spray ever in the world. I'm obsessed with that. That's a great deal. And be sure to check that out and follow Scrandy Beauty on TikTok and Instagram. Thank Thank you. you.